Hello everyone, welcome to my little corner of the internet. If you're new here, hi, my name is Katie. I am a flute player that does nerdy video game, TV, anime, film, music covers. If you're interested in that, I'll leave a link to, no, it's on this side. I'll leave a link to my playlist right up there of all my cover songs, as well as a Twitch streamer where I stream games like Breath of the Wild doing Breath of the Wild bingos. And if you're interested what a Breath of the Wild bingo is, I have another video there for you explaining that, as well as some near games and games with my viewers. If all of that sounds interesting, I have links in the description below. I also have a Patreon where you can support me and my content link in the description below. But pretty much if you Google my name, Katie Shesko, you'll find me. Today, I'm back with another video about just flute playing and being a flute player. And today is for some of the newer people to flute playing, and that is how to clean your flute. And today we're gonna go from the simplest and most accessible way to some of the more advanced tools that I use to keep my flute in tip top shape. As a wind player, blowing into an instrument, it gets filled with spit. And let's just be honest, this is not the glamorous side of being a flute player, but it is our reality. To help keep my flute in tip top shape, I try not to eat anything or drink anything other than water for at least a half hour before I start playing. And this helps keep any residue, food residues, sugar residue from my saliva, from getting on the pads, getting them dirty, making them sticky, and just gunking up the mechanisms in general. So that is the first thing, is preventative maintenance of just not eating or drinking anything but water for 30 minutes before, or, you know, try to brush your teeth before you play, and definitely don't drink anything like that while you're actually playing. But today we're here to talk about how to clean your flute after you've got done with a practice session. The most traditional and accessible way to clean your flute is with a cleaning rod. Now, my flute happens to come with a really nice wooden one, but a lot of beginning and intermediate flutes will come with a metal one and that is perfectly fine. Now, what you're going to have to provide is a cloth. Now, mine is in need of a wash, which I'm laundry days tomorrow, so it'll get washed tomorrow. But 100% cotton cloth is all you absolutely need to keep your flute in tip top shape. A lot of people would like to use a bandana and that works great as well, but any 100% cotton. So if you go to your favorite fabric store and look for 100% cotton and it's not super stretchy, that's gonna work great for keeping your flute clean. Now what you're gonna wanna do, thread, the cloth through the little hole like you're threading a needle except it's much easier because it's much larger and then wrap the cloth over the top of the tip that way you're not ramming the metal rod or the wooden rod directly into your head joint it's covered and then you'll be able to get the bits right at the very top at this point you're going to be cleaning each of the three parts separately and you're just going to want to insert into the head joint give it a twist a couple of times and then pull it out and then replace your head joint into your into your case. And then again, the same with the body. I personally prefer to put the rod in the direction that the air is going. So I'll start, start at the top where the head joint goes in and just push the rod through and pull it out the bottom. Now, if I had a particularly long session, I might do that two or three times just to make sure that I've gotten everything that I can out of the instrument. And then same with the foot joint, I will insert the rod where the foot joint connects to the body and swipe it through one or two times. At that point, you can put your flute in your case and you are ready to go. Now, what some people also like to do at this point, which is completely optional, but it will help keep your flute shiny, is after your flute has been, has been placed into your case, some people will just like to take the same cloth that they used on one of the dryer ends and just gently, just gently buff the flute, trying to get some of the oils from their fingerprints off of it. You don't wanna to press too hard because you don't wanna damage your key mechanisms, but this just helps prevent the tarnish and just keeps your flute nice and shiny. Again, that step's optional, but why not? It takes an extra two seconds and who doesn't want a nice shiny flute? 
One thing that I absolutely need to stress, and I see this happen a lot, one thing I absolutely wanna stress, and I see this happen a lot with my younger flute students, is then they like to fold up their cloth and then stick the cloth inside the flute case and then close the case because it keeps everything in one location. Do not do this. You now have a wet cloth in a closed case with very, very little airflow and that can start to mold. That can now introduce moisture to your flute pads and flute pads and moisture do not mix. If your flute pads get wet, they swell, which then means they won't seal all the way, which means your flute won't play properly. And then you have to take it in to a technician to replace the pads and that can get very pricey. Now, while you should take your flute to a technician once a year or so, you don't wanna have to take it more than absolutely necessary. So keeping your spit cloth out of your case is a great way to ensure that you only really need to take your flute in when things need to be just maintained and or repaired. So the cleaning rod and cloth met method is great for beginners, especially because beginner players tend not to play for hours upon hours on end. And usually when they practice, they practice that one time and that's it. Now, personally, with my busy life, I'm a mom of two, very rarely do I get a full practice session in at any one time. So what I tend to do is I'll practice for 25 minute chunks. I'll leave my flute out and I'll try to get another half hour, 25 minutes later in the day. And if you're interested in how I practice in 25 minute chunks, I have another video right up here about one of my 25 minute practice sessions. And if that's what I'm going to do, I like to use what's called a flute flag. Now the flute flag is a very long rod and you can buy it in just the one piece, which is about the same size as a cleaning rod. Or I invested in the extender so that it goes the entire length of the flute. Now what I like about the flute flag is it allows me to quickly clean out my flute by inserting it at the very end while my flute is all still assembled. Swirl it around a couple times and pull it out. And then I will set it on my flute peg. I will put a anti-tarnish cloth over it. And then I will come back to my flute later. The downside with this, at least for me, is I find sometimes the flute flag doesn't get all of the spit. It does a really good job overall, but it works really well for a quick cleaning when I just want to... I'm just gonna put my flute up for a little bit. My flute's gonna be vertical, so everything's going to drain anyway. So anything that might have been missed is just gonna drain to the bottom. And it's just, again, a very quick way to do it. So if you have quick changes, that is the instrument that you want. Now, for the most advanced one, I have this Valentino flute flag. Now, the difference between the Valentino and the regular flute flag is that the flute flag has little wings. Whereas the Valentino one is more like a microfiber scale. This is what I use at the end of rehearsals or when I'm done for the day, or if I know that I, after, this re, after this practice session, I'm going to be done for the day, I will pull this out. I find that this one in particular does a much better job at getting all of the moisture out of my flute a little bit more effectively than the flute flag. Now, this one you could also add the end to. I haven't because I only have one extender that I keep on my stand for those quick times. But if I am using this, I know I'm putting my flute away anyway. So that's what I use. And also it's really thick. So sometimes when you pull it out, you can accidentally pull your entire flute apart. And I just rather would not, I would not, I would rather not run that risk. So again, similar to how I clean with the cleaning rod and just cloth, I do each individual per part twice. Give it a nice spin and you can even see I'm having a little bit more trouble pulling out the individual piece, but I prefer that because then I get a nice, I know that I'm getting all of the moisture out. So you can even see, I gotta push a little bit harder. to pull it out. And again, my personal preference is when I'm pulling my flute apart to clean it, I like to push it in the direction that the air flows. 
And again, you do not want to keep these instruments inside the case itself. Most intermediate flute cases come with a zipper bag over it and it has a pocket for your cleaning stuff. If your case does not come with that, I highly suggest getting one. This one is just the standard one mine came with, but things like fluter scooter or Protect. They have a lot of different fun cases. If you don't like black, I personally like the all black. That's just kind of my aesthetic, but you can really get creative with your cases and they make great gifts for the flute player in your life. Or if anyone's asking you for what you want for Christmas or birthday, I used to ask for flute accessories too. And then it's in that pocket that I will keep all of my cleaning supplies and not in the hard case itself. Now, a lot of places will also sell cloths for keeping the outside of the flute shiny. I honestly don't know what this one is made out of. This one came with my flute. It has the flute, flute master's logo. That's my main flute one that you hear in most of my recordings. So uh, my flute came with this cloth. The biggest thing when you have these polishing cloths is if the cloth changes color when you're polishing your flute, stop using it. It usually means it's stripping the outside plating and that is not good for your flute. So if you can, if you can rub your flute clean and it still holds the same color, then it's usually okay. But again, like I said, you, your 100% cotton cloth that you used also works well. But if you want to get a little bit extra, you want to go to the next level, getting a nice polishing cloth that doesn't change colors when you use it is a great idea. One other thing to keep in mind when cleaning your flute, especially if you're taking it apart to clean it, and this also goes for assembling it, is never grab the keys. Because when you're grabbing the keys and you're shoving something in, you're starting to sh like maneuver the mechanisms and that is something that you don't want to do. We've talked in other videos about how temperamental the flute can be and the least you can mess with the mechanisms, the better you're going to be and the less repairs you're going to need. So when you're actually like cleaning the flute, hold it up by where the head joint is inserted because there's no keys up there. It gives you a nice solid place to hang on to as you're putting the cleaning rods through the flute, which is another good reason why I prefer to put my, my cleaning rods through where the direction of the air flow. And then again, with the foot joint, you're going to hold it at the bottom where there's no keys and there's no mechanism. It gives you a much better holding and you're less likely to damage or push things out of alignment by if as opposed to if you were holding the keys themselves. So that's about it. That's how I keep my flute in tip top shape. But do you have any other flute cleaning questions? Make sure you leave a comment below. If you like these flute tips, again, make sure you like, share, subscribe, leave a comment below on what other things you would like to know from me about playing the flute and how to maintain your flute. I hope you found this video informative. Again, check out all my links. Consider supporting me on Patreon so that I can continue to make this content as well as music videos. And consider coming over to Twitch where I do gaming. And even if you're not interested in gaming, we usually have a lot of fun discussions and it's a great way for you to hang out with me in a very casual setting. I look forward to making another one and I will catch you in the next video. Take care now. Bye-bye.